Hi everyone, welcome back to Seabit Australia. Now I'm standing here with Mark Spencer. G'day Mark, how are you going? Thank you, very good. Thank you for being part of the show. Appreciate it. Now, Mark, in case you don't know, is the founder and writer of Asterix itself, uh, so P PBX software. Now Mark, how is Seabit working for you? And, and how are you working for Seabit? <laughs> how are you finding the show? Well, it's a, it's a wonderful show, and there's been so many people here, and the reception has been just wonderful. And, uh, Asterisk is very disproportionately popular in Australia. So yeah, it, is, it really is very famous. Yeah, the Digi website you watch is in the top 10,000 websites in Australia. Really? Whereas uh, across the world, it's maybe in the top 10. So it's just an idea of like relatively more popular Asterisk is in Australia. And so you can see a lot of excellent examples of the bears. Australian airline and uh, American Express contact center, which one of Australia. Really? All running on Asterix. All Asterix, wow. ATP has done just a fantastic job of getting Asterix out there. Now, maybe tell the camera for a bit. Uh, Asterix itself, why did you sit down and write this? Well, I wish I could say that that was because it was this grand vision of yeah, how yeah. everything was going to change. Because I'm told it actually wasn't, right? Business, but it, it wasn't. It was because I had started this in a company and I didn't have any money, I'm sure. So Some can relate. are going to be able to relate to this. So, you know, I put together my own website and I put together my own computer. And among other things, I couldn't afford a phone system. So I just put together my own phone system. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it just seemed to work at the time. And then a couple of years later, we were sort of sitting around scratching our chins and going, you know what, I think the phone system is actually more interesting than this the tech support business, business that we're doing. <laughs> so we refocused the company around Asterix. Fantastic. Changed the name to Digi. Now, Asterix itself, then you had a Asterix dash NG. What's the story? How is it that that became open source? Because open source, we were at the IBM stand um, yesterday. And IBM is like open source, open source, just get it out there. They're, they're loving open source. How is it that you uh, wished to take on that model as well? Well, I had actually done open source software development before I got involved with starting Asterix. Okay. Cool. Most notably, there's an instant messenger called Game. Yes. Uh, and so I was the original author of Game. Uh -huh. um, and so uh, you guys that use Linux probably heard of it. Oh, yeah. So, uh, there's a big fan base of Game. Yeah. So Game, and then I did a few other projects that most people have heard of, like Keops and LTTPD uh, and DJ Crazy. But then uh, when I did Asterisk, it only seemed logical to make it available as open source. And then it turns out that the telecommunications market is really ripe for open source because of course it was huge, all the solutions were proprietary, there was a big demand for customization, especially extreme customization. People really want the open systems to be able to do it. And then uh, all of that sort of put together with the idea that we could come up with a business model around Astros made it possible for us to really now, ironically, uh, you were asked in the last interview, and I thought it's a good question to ask, how does someone make money from giving away their software? Now, I asked that tongue-in-cheek because I know the answer, but yeah. give us an understanding. Well, so the answer is, of course, that you don't make money by giving away software for free. Right, obviously. You make money with a business that is built around the concept that there is a product that people can download for free off the community. And you leverage open source as a development and marketing thing to sell a more traditional product or at least use it as a way to change your business model but fundamentally you still have to sell products that have value to it. So yours is a, a platform? We sell actually a number of different products. We sell uh, interface cards which is where we got started. So things like BRI and PRI and E1, analog cards, all the ability to bring in old school to nothing. We also sell a more traditional packaged version of the software called Business Edition that goes through formalized regression testing. We have certain proprietary add-ons from other companies that we make available for Asterisk. Uh, and then we have, most recently, some sort of complete offerings like uh, the new Asterisk Appliance, which is uh, here, but it's about the, half the size of a sheet of paper. And it includes Asterisk and Linux all kind of bundled into something that looks a lot like a Linux system that is your router, so that it makes the technology much more accessible to people who are not already using Linux and Asterisk. Fantastic. So from, from desperate to, to develop something that could answer your phone, 
all of a sudden you've got this uh, mini empire, right? It's, it's fantastic. Now, we've actually got a friend of yours here, uh, Gilad, if you want to jump in frame. Gilad is actually part of uh, the Seabit Hanover Fair and he, he takes part in often organizing and has a strong passion for open source. So Gilad, I know you wanted to jump on camera and ask Mark a question. No, like, I always I wanted to know when is the DGM board coming? Uh, the Astros compliance uh, should be released in the next six to eight weeks. It's going through uh, product qualification today, and then uh, there'll be an official beta period before the box is launched, but it will be launched worldwide at the same time. And for those that don't know, did you box does? The, the Digium Appliance is what I was discussing. That's that. Okay. It, uh, it includes uh, Linux up to eight, in one. Right. And it includes up to eight analog ports in the first version. And then Asterisk it has a compact flash slot and an internal SD slot so that you can use it for storing the voice memory as well. And it's really just Linux, Asterisk, and uh, GUI all combined into one box. Very exciting. So as you can see guys, if, you, if you're into uh, telecommunications and Asterix itself, come down. Mark Spencer is floating around, but very, very hard to catch him. Mark, thank you mate for having the time to spend time with the CBIT blog. Uh, once again, it's been Hugo Ortega and we'll see you at the next stand. Bye-bye. Thanks, Mark.